What up, data nerds? I'm Luke, a data analyst, and let's talk about how much math you need to know as a data analyst. I've found for my job, the majority of math can be categorized into four areas. The good news is, if you went to a secondary school, like a high school in the United States, you probably covered the majority of math that you need to know. So you could probably turn this video off. That was a bad joke, don't leave. As I'll be sharing how I use tools in my job to implement advanced math topics like probability and statistics. Even though I'm using math on a daily basis, I still find that I have to brush up on it from time to time, which I've been doing lately with the Intro to Statistics course from Coursera. So I was super stoked when I reached out to Coursera and asked them if they would sponsor this video. All right, so let's jump in. We're gonna start with the basic concepts first and then move into the harder ones. Let's say that I have a colleague, Tuvu, that comes to me with a work problem. Hey, Luke. Hey, Tu. Hey. Have you ever noticed what's odd? What? Every other number. Hey, can you jump on cleaning that data science job data that boss keeps bucking us about? Totes. Thanks, Luke. So when it comes to basic data cleaning for numerical data, I primarily use arithmetic and algebra. Let's start with arithmetic first. This is one of the most basic forms of math that includes addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So for this, we have some data science job data that we want to clean up. Specifically, we wanna calculate the total pay. Right now, we have the base pay and the bonus pay, and we need to use basic addition of the two so we can get the total pay. We can then use some more advanced arithmetic to take it a step further and find the average total pay by summing up all those total pays and then dividing by the count of all those pays. Now, beyond arithmetic, algebra is the next most common type of math that I use. In this, you use unknown quantities along with known numbers to solve for missing values. Dead nerds, editor Luke here. One quick note on the animations I've been using in this video so far. I'm using them with the help of YouTuber 3 blue one browns Python library, which I have the code on over here. And so I wanna give a quick shout out to the Menom team that developed this. All right, back to real Luke. So in the case of this job data, let's say that we're trying to calculate the percentage of bonuses of the base pay. We would need to use algebra to rearrange this formula to solve for that bonus percentage. Once it's rearranged, we can plug this into Excel and calculate that percentage. And this basic math, along with a lot of other concepts that we'll cover today, can really be performed in any data analytics tool. So I'm using Excel now, but I'm gonna go into other tools as well. Now, because I use arithmetic and algebra on a daily basis in my job, I really feel that most people have the skills necessary to start in data analytics. Hey look, let's now get into some EDA using some descriptive statistics. Statistics, nice. Hey, did you know that 63% of quoted statistics to prove a point are made up on the spot? Is that true? It's gotta be, I read it in a quote. So let's move into the next major form of math use, and that is descriptive statistics. This is used to summarize a set of observations in order to provide context with small multiples. In simple terms, our brains weren't meant to comprehend thousands or even millions of rows of data. We need these descriptive statistics in order to provide these generalities about the data. Now in things like Excel, you can use something as simple as a formula to calculate these type of values. But if you've seen my recent Excel video, you know I prefer pivot tables instead. With this, we can dive even deeper into these summary statistics and can identify things like the average pay of a data analyst, in general around 90,000, or if we break it down further for entry-level data analysts, we can see that it is around 74,000. But honestly, when I get into larger data sets, I prefer to use tools like SQL, Power BI, or even Python. Let's jump into SQL next. And for this, we have access to this job data in a database. I can easily write a SQL query to look at the different statistics I care about. And once again, I can even get to the average pay for a data analyst, regardless of experience, at around 90,000. So what these summary statistics help me do is better understand how the data looks, whether it's a few lines or a million lines, but more importantly, does the data make sense and is there any bad data in it? But statistics like min, max, and average don't always tell the full picture. Hey, for the next step in analyzing the data, let's get a bit more advanced with probabilities. All right, let's get into probability distributions. And I'm not gonna lie, I had to do a little bit of review prior to this video to beef up my knowledge on this area. So for this, tools like spreadsheets, viz tools, and even programming languages like R can analyze this. But for this, we're gonna use Python because I feel like there's an abundance of resources and I can do this more easily with this tool. So I've loaded this data into a Jupyter notebook, calculated the total pay, and then plotted a histogram of the total pay for data analysts. So what is this histogram showing? Well, the highest bar here shows that for the count of around 200 jobs, the salary is around 85,000. Now here at 50,000, they're only around 20 job postings. 
So all of this data combines to provide the probability distribution. So what does this all mean? Well, we can use this data to infer the probability of a data analyst's salary. So if you're a data analyst, there's a 50% chance that your salary is greater than 85,000. One quick reminder, this is for all level of data analysts, not just entry level data analysts. Or even another way to look at this is that there is a 75% chance that the salary is above $72,800. Hey, look, this is great. But I'm actually more of a fan of box plots. Can we see it in this as well? Yeah. Now box plots, also known as box and whisker plots, are great at showing the five most important attributes about a data set quickly and also visually. Take for example, the total pay of data analysts. We can quickly find the median, minimum and maximum, and also understand where the majority of the salaries reside within that 25 to 75 percentile. Now, because of the simplicity of this plot, I can more easily explore the job position level of data analysts. And we can see the median salary for entry level data analysts is around 70,000 where those for mid to senior level are around 100,000. And so yeah, I tend to agree with two on the usefulness of these visualizations. And I don't really get into more than the basics of probabilities for my job. Someone like a data scientist may get more into exploring what distribution fits this data better. You know, they really should be using a Poisson distribution for this instead. What's a croissant distribution? And I feel like understanding the basics of probability and statistics are good enough for my job. And this actually leads into the sponsor of this video, Coursera, and more specifically, the course I took to refresh my knowledge in all this. Working as a data analyst, I can comfortably say I use math on a daily basis. I've worked on some teams where I'm the most knowledgeable person in math on that team. Because of this, I'm having to break down and explain my models and calculations, basically like teaching. But I've also been on teams that I'm not the most knowledgeable. And I've worked with people that have like PhDs in math. So I'm having to go through and actually defend my models and calculations to them. Either way, in both scenarios, having a core and basic understanding of mathematics is key for the job. Because of this, I think this introduction to statistics course from Stanford University on Coursera is not only great for veterans like me that want to refresh their knowledge, but it's it's also great for beginners. It not only covers and goes into detail with statistics and probability, it also goes into a lot more reasoning and theory behind these mathematics. So you have a stronger foundation in not only explaining your work, but also defending your work to those math nerds. So use the link in the description to check out the course and those that finish are awarded a certificate of completion. All right, so thank you Coursera for sponsoring this video. Let's get into the last major concept to cover. Now that we're done with data cleaning, EDA and analytics, Let's get into predicting some data. Oh, I like this. So let's try to predict data analyst salaries. Yeah, by the way, did you know I hate statistics jokes? Really? Yeah, they are all mean. Get it, mean as in average. Oh, I regress. No, too. All right, so let's get into regression. This is a part of statistics that uses one or multiple variables to explain another variable. So in our work case with two, let's try to use a variable to help explain or even predict what the total pay of data analysts should be. Years of experience seems to be one of the best starting points for using to predict this. From here, we can use linear regression, or in the case of Power BI, a trend line, in order to get a predictor of what salary should be based on years of experience. So for this model, at zero years of experience, my expected salary is $72,000. And at 10 years, you would be making $117,000. Checking this estimate against Glassdoor, we can see this estimate is actually pretty close, with each average salary being around $73,000 for entry-level data analysts. Now with these type of models, you're far from done here. You need to still take it a step further. In this case, I would look into metrics like R squared, which can help explain what percentage of the years of experience were explained by the movement in salary, where one would be a perfect score, and it can be directly explained and has a high correlation, and zero Zero is quite the opposite in that it isn't explaining it very well. Well, in the case of our model right here, it's actually not that good. It's only around 0.11. Now I need to take it a step further, understanding how this R squared correlated to this graph, and then from there identify and explore new and different techniques to potentially model for this. Or maybe my dad is just bad. Please no, no! Hey Tim, so you've obviously had a lot of experience with data analytics. What would you say are areas that are important or maybe not so important for data analysts? Generally from my experience, I didn't really use a lot of calculus as a data analyst 
mostly just enough to understand how linear regression works. Also, not so much discrete math. I think it's more relevant for people who do a lot of machine learning or software engineering. But I do use a lot of descriptive statistics and probability distribution almost on a day-to-day -day basis because they are really the main tool to help us explore, summarize, and understand the data. All right, so big shout out to Tuvu for helping me in this video. And another disclaimer, I watched her video on mathematics and data science, so go be sure to check it out. All right, as always, if you got value out of this video, smash that like button. With that, see you in the next one.